A roll call. Councilman Duper. Present. Councilman Popescu. Here. Mayor Protepper Lenard. Here. Mayor Rigsby. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you for that. Um, we had a closed session for the successor agency, and can we get a report from our city attorney? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The successor agency board was in closed session on the item list on, listed on the agenda, which was a real estate matter where the uh, board met, conferred with the negotiating representative listed on the agenda. There's no reportable action uh, that was taken this evening that is to be reported at this time. Thank you. Thank you for that. Next, we'll have our invocation and pledge of allegiance. In the absence of Councilman Daly, we'll be led by Councilman Popescu. Please stand. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to get together tonight and discuss city business. We thank you for the opportunity you've given us to live in this amazing country, incredible state, and beautiful city. We ask that you guide us and protect us as we discuss these items. In Jesus' name, amen. Are there any items to be added or deleted? No, sir. I have some requests from the public for discussion. I don't think any of them apply to agenda items, so we'll bring them up in the order they are presented to me, starting with Dick Wiley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council, staff. Just wanted to uh, let you know on the 26th of May, in Heritage Park, there's going to be a history fair. And it's going to be from 11 to 2 there in the park. And it'll be about the houses, uh, history of them, history of the train, area of history. There'll be boards and plaques out there for display. So you're all invited, and you're more than welcome to show up again. It's 11 to 2 on the 26th. Are yeah. you are you the new mayor of the Historical Commission? No. I'm not the mayor, the chairman. No, no. Jim Ship is still the chair. Okay. So I thought maybe he'd come and say something, but seeing he's not here, I figure I'll let you know. Okay. Did you notice the improvement that we done to the front of the park, Heritage Park? Yeah. Yeah. Looks good. Uh, one comment for you. Some of your um, little rock that you put out here, maybe get a little bit bigger stuff. Because I see a lot of it on the walk out here. And I'm thinking at night you get an older person stepping on it, and they're going to tip over or fall over. I'm thinking, you know, the kids probably picked those up and just play with them out there. Thank you. Our next speaker is Heather Perry. Good evening, Mayor Rigsby and council members. Some of you I've met, and there's one of you I haven't that's here. Uh, my name's Heather Perry. I'm the district representative for the metro area for Supervisor Don Rao. I'm here tonight to introduce myself and to also give a little bit of updates. I did the supervisor when she came here a few months ago, did she speak about the nominate a safety hero that's going on, part of our countywide vision? So it's part of our vision for safety. And it's only going on, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get here sooner, till the end of this month. So hopefully you have somebody that you might be able to nominate. Um, examples of safety heroes are a person who has started a neighborhood watch, teacher who encourages safe after school programs, 
a business person who encourages their employees to learn CPR and other life-saving techniques, a child who's helped their family prepare for an earthquake or fire by practicing evacuations or a preparedness kit, and a person who's helped law enforcement with a tip that led to an arrest or prevented someone from getting hurt. I know UKIPA has nominated um, one of their, I believe he's a um, explorer that's worked with them a lot. Actually, they have two nominees. Uh, so if there's somebody in the explorer program that you know, um, Boy Scouts, something, uh, Girl Scout, they would be ideal candidates. Um, the other thing I came across actually last night in another city council and I had heard prior to this is uh, the, the TENS, which I'm sure Councilman Duper is familiar with. Um, it's a reverse 911, basically, like the Paradise Fire. Unfortunately, that communication didn't get out correctly. But what this does is the county, in case of an emergency, will start auto-calling or auto-dialing and calling with a message to residents. Now, some people don't have home phones anymore. They don't have the landlines. Unless you register with this program and register your cell phone number, you will not receive that call. So I encourage people to um, register their cell phones with this um, TENS unit or I'm just learning about it, um, so it's, if anybody has any information, I have one copy here, I can hand it over, but we do have something digitally that I can send as well. Um, the only other thing that I can think of is that 911 now does accept text messaging, so that's very important, um, at least in our county area, I know it does um, for safety reasons when people cannot actually call, they can text now. So um, that's it. Any questions that you have of me, I'm willing to answer. But other than that, I just wanted to come and say hi. So OK, thank you very much. Thanks, and welcome to our community. Our next speaker is Joe Frank. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council, and staff. First, I'd like to start off by thanking the Sheriff's Department, the great department, for uh, finding my stray uncle, who's 91 years old, that uh, walked off from his house, I believe it was last Friday, Thursday, last Thursday. And um, he, uh, he's got a little dementia, and he went to some of his own ha haunts, heading up towards the adobe, the, the barn, and he tripped and fell in one of the row trees in one of the uh, furrows. And fortunately, uh, the weeds were three feet high, but fortunately he popped his head up when he heard 40 King and some of the officers around and, and they spotted him and got him what he needed and got him home. So he's in good shape. Thank you, sir. Next, I'd like to say, or I'd like to ask, I see what your short term goals are for the Adobe, which are nothing other than what you did three or four months ago, what are your long term goals? Are we going to stabilize that? Are we going to clean it up? Are we going to keep it clean? Are we going to leave the trash cans out? I'm getting, I put things on Facebook about it, Friends of the Frank Adobe on fa Facebook, and I know several of the people on Mission Road. And they're all complaining, it's an eyesore, what are you going to do with it, what's, what's going to happen, what's going to go on. Um, May 26th is the uh, heritage uh, thing, and I understand Tom Astley and his last heritage group drove by in a bus with a, a crowd of people in it and uh, made the comment, there's the Frank Adobe, hope it can be saved. And I hope it can be saved too because it can't take too many more years. I was down there the other day, and I don't know whether it was because the rain was all gone and it was a nice clear day, but the east side looked terrible. In fact, the whole thing looks terrible, but at least somebody from the city could go down there and move the trash barrels to the back so it doesn't look quite so bad. If you had, if you had a piece of property that some private owner owned, it looked like that, you'd be all over him. 
So how is that a good representation? I mean, you should be walking the walk and talking the talk if you're going to put that, that out. Um, I would like, as you know, I've said it before, I would like the, the adobe, because I don't see saving the grove is going to be a priority to the city. I see no water down there yet. I would like to see the adobe given to me. You guys keep the property which you already own, which you can get thousands of dollars for, with the contingency that the, the developer that comes in is responsible for moving it and reconstructing it to somewhere of my choice. It's, we're talking a thousand square feet, pretty much rectangle. It, it may be a difficult move. Some people say you can't, some say you can, but something's got to be done. That is a, over 150 years old. It's the, it's the heritage and the citrus pioneering uh, epitome of, of this valley. Uh, it's things I've harped about before that I don't think I should need to harp about. <clears throat> 30 years ago, when I was a detective for Loma Linda, out of the sheriff's office, I was awarded the uh, outstanding officer uh, in Loma Linda. The city council was 100% behind things. And at that time, they didn't have a lot of money. There was a big slump. Uh, I believe now that the economy is as good or as, good or as best as it's going to ever get. And there's got to be at least some money to go in there to stabilize it, to clean it up um, on a regular basis. Obviously, you don't want me down there. You won't give me a key. Um, although, I, you know, it hurts that you won't because that place means so much to me. Um, but, you know, I can't force you to do it. Uh, I don't think any, I don't think anybody can force you to do do what you don't want to do. Uh, even the state historical commission, you know, you probably in violation of some of those rules by not stabilizing and maintaining it. But they're written so loosely that they're, from what I can see, it's, they'd be easy to get out of. So it's about all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Mike Murphy. Hi, I'm Joe's cousin, so I came up to reiterate basically what he just said. We started uh, 20 years ago uh, when the developers first came in, and uh, we started to, to get it registered. It took about five years, and we got it registered, and then the economy went kaput, and we all basically did too. And uh, it's a historical thing. I was raised at the Adobe and all that, and I'm a historian type of stuff. My dad was born there, his, his granddad and all that. You look at that from the stories and everything I remember, so we want to find a happy medium where we can move it or do something with the help of the developers. Quite simple. We can't let it sit there and rot. I owe that to my parents and the history that I was, the culture I was brought up in, which doesn't get taught anymore. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to make a comment? Okay, then we'll go to our agendized items. Uh, we have a conflict of interest issue that makes item one uh, impossible to go through with. However, is there a possibility of taking care of the rule of necessity? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the uh, conflicts that have been previously noted on the record involving employment or uh, income through the university or medical center uh, applies to everybody but uh, <coughs> Councilman Daly and Duper. So they would be uh, two of the three members to participate on this action. In the absence of Councilman Daly tonight, we would not have a quorum. Uh, we can select tonight the third member that would uh, act in the future on this item. Since the three of you are here, it would be appropriate to go ahead and, and make that selection process in the normal fashion with my pre-prepared Swizzle sticks. <laughs> is, there, is there a problem with selecting from the group that's here tonight because Councilman Daly is not present? Uh, no. Uh, Councilman Daly is automatically participating. So the only thing we would do tonight is the three can choose through a random process. No, I understand, but if he's not here, 
can't we just choose two out of the three? Or how, how can we? No. Um, <coughs> under the Political Reform Act, uh, the fact that a member is missing does not constitute grounds under the rule of necessity to replace him with an otherwise conflicted member. So, in other words, by nature, he, he and Mr. Duper have to sit on every single decision. Correct. Unless, unless there's some exigency or something that, that, that attaches because... Well, I, I don't believe that any exigency in this type of matter would apply. Well, maybe not this one, but let's say there was one, right? I, I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, this could be. I, I don't believe that. I don't, know. I don't believe there's an exception solid. for accident. I think the only <clears throat> the only thing we could do is res or schedule an extra meeting when both of the non-conflicted members could be here, and the whoever the selected third person. Correct. Is. Wh whichever three participate, all three need to be present to constitute yeah. a quorum of the council. Yeah. So if, if we choose the, the third tonight, that person and the two non-conflicted will need to act in the future. We don't get... So, to, to, so let's say we choose the third person tonight and then at the next business meeting, that third person has a, an issue and they can't make the meeting, then this pushes off again. If we have to wait, we should probably just choose that night. Well, or should we think of some other way to hear this tonight? Yes, if we deferred be. the choosing to a, a later meeting and the two non-conflicted are present, but one of the conflicted members is not present, we would still need to, he would still need to have the chance to participate, even if he's not here. So we would have to draw a straw for that person. And if he were to win and he's not present, then we'd have to continue it anyway. So the, the issue of having three present is the same whether we pick tonight or in the future. It's only reasonable to do it tonight since the three are here to choose. So if, if I understand you correctly, the rules of necessity doesn't apply to whether we have a quorum or not. Uh, the rule of necessity Sounds like is a it means. Over, overrules the quorum issue. <laughs> but, it's a means of filling the quorum with otherwise conflicted members uh, to act with the non-conflicted members. But you cannot replace a non-conflicted member uh, who is simply absent for a particular meeting. Because that's not a necessity. It's Correct. a convenience, but not a necessity. Correct. There's no necessity that we act tonight. Yeah. Uh, we can act at a future meeting when the non-conflicted member is present. So my recommendation is to go ahead and, and select the third member tonight, and then we will know the three who will need to be present and can schedule accordingly uh, with vacation schedules or other conflicts so that we know that you're present, uh, the three that will act. So okay. that being said, if there's no further question, I'll go ahead and present the straws. Just, for just one more. Is there, do you foresee a need to do it on one of our off nights or could this hold over till the next meeting? Well, we're, well, <coughs> we're meeting on the 28th anyway. Oh, okay, good. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Okay. We Are you planning to be here on the 28th? Yeah. yeah. And we're all here. So at least one of our members will be here. You're here, right? Oh, so. Yeah, so if so he, he if he draws the vote, then we can't have it on the 28th, but, if but one we'll of us find draws, out. Then we're okay. But he has a shop. And if and if you draw if you draw so the that's one why in, we have to draw today, just if you day. draw me, you have to do it in the twenty eighth because I won't be here for the June meeting. So that's okay. <laughs> I shuffled. I think I started at that end last time. I'm the yeah. voter, so you guys are that out. Is the winning so we have straw. to meet on the twenty eighth because I'm gone in June. Okay, there. That saves that. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. It just has to be, it has to be a random choice. We could do a three-sided coin if you wanted. We, we could cut cards or throw the dice or we could do, do any method that's is, random. <laughs> is scissor, paper, rock a game of skill or chance? Good question. <laughs> a round robin, scissor, paper, rock. 
Okay, and for all I know, all three of those said vote, so I don't know. Uh, I'm trusting that there was only one no, of them. I, I did display them. <laughs> <laughs> you could have been stacking the deck. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. I'm not that devious. <laughs> yes. You like signs. Sign programs are <laughs> my thing. Okay, so that one is continued. So we're going to have to re... Uh, should we uh, accept any public hearing commentary or because we don't even have a quorum to listen to them? No, we, we don't have a quorum, so uh, of necessity, uh, and you may all vote to continue it. That's a, a agenda ma matter. Uh, the motion would be to continue it to the next meeting of uh, May 28th. You're fine. Okay, is there any opposition to that? Hearing none, it's approved. So do we have to re-announce it or re advertise it? No. Okay, no, so we're continuing it from tonight. Okay, so they have to just watch our video or read our transcript. Or, Correct. Okay. Okay, then the consent calendar is our next item. It's large. Uh, do, there's, there's a motion second. to approve, a motion, uh, there's a second. Any further discussion? Any opposition? Hearing none is approved unanimously. Next is item 16, Council Bill R-2019-19, adopting a new local California Environmental Equality or Quality Act CEQA guidelines. Mr. City Attorney. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this item is a resolution to adopt local guidelines for processing of uh, CEQA applications. Uh, in effect, we are simply laying out the existing state guidelines and incorporating them by reference and summarizing uh, a few of the procedures. Uh, this is nothing new. It's, these are the procedures that we have been following heretofore that apply to us whether we adopt them uh, or not. <laughs> but state law does require that we have local procedures consistent with those state guidelines and uh, so I recommend that you approve resolution R-219-19. Uh, the staff report uh, has a little more information, but uh, uh, there's not really anything to add to that. So Thank we you. have no latitude to nullify CEQA? Uh, unfortunately not. Drat. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any opposition? Hearing none, that is approved. Any reports of councilmen? Any reports of officers? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I have one item for your consideration. We will have coming up in the fairly near future a personnel hearing, uh, which will be something that we dealt with previously. I won't announce that tonight, uh, but uh, for purpose of scheduling, uh, I would ask that each of you be in touch with uh, the city clerk uh, and let her know uh, of your availability for the next uh, two or three meetings, and uh, then we will work with the other interested parties to schedule that meeting. Uh, the other consideration on that would be whether we want to hold it on a night other than the regularly scheduled meeting. We would probably agendize it and then adjourn uh, from the regular meeting to perhaps a Wednesday, Thursday, or the following off week, which would be Tuesday of the following week, uh, at your pleasure. So if you would uh, confer with the city clerk individually with your schedules, uh, we can begin that process of scheduling. But, but if, you, if you have a preference, I guess we could take it into account in doing that as far as which night of the week you'd like to do it. The time involvement would probably be an hour or so. Would this be a closed session? It would be a closed session. Looks like it's going to be difficult for the next couple of meetings. 
If you let me know if you have any plans to be out of town when yeah. you're definitely not available, then we can look at dates outside of those. I guess we can talk to you individually. Do we have to, should we set that now or? Well, I can't set it now. It's not on the agenda for that, but, okay. um, and I have to confer with some other parties as well. So uh, I think if we were to have the information as to when any of you are out of town uh, in the next two or three months, uh, hopefully sooner <laughs> rather than later, but that will be information we can then take and confer with the other parties and pick a date. Okay, then we'll talk to you individually before we leave okay. today. Okay, uh, any other staff comments? If not, then the city council is adjourned and we'll resume our successor agency which we opened earlier. Are there any items to be added or deleted? No, sir. Any comments from the public? On non-agenda items, seeing none, hearing none, consent calendar. I'll move it. <clears throat> There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, any opposition? Hearing none, it's approved unanimously. The successor agency is adjourned. Now to the housing authority, any items to be added or deleted? No, sir. Any comments from the public on non-agenda items? Seeing and hearing none, consent calendar. There's a motion. I'll second. There's a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, any opposition? Hearing none, it's approved unanimously. Any member reports? Any reports of officers? Hearing none of either. We are adjourned and that's the last of our agendas for tonight. Thank you for coming. And we wish that you have that short a meeting at every council you go to.